I remember reading, I want to say it was over maybe a, a, a Christmas, New Year holiday when the book came out. At least that's when it came into my awareness. And I devoured the book, as did at that point, two or three of my daughters. And I was struck by not only the kind of propulsive narrative tension of these intersecting fates, uh, but this, this story about the persistence of hope against a backdrop of darkness, a backdrop of war, a backdrop of, of a world in which evil is clearly possible and in which innocence and hope somehow survive. And those are beautiful themes to me. And at that point, the rights weren't available. I was doing some movies. I had never done a period piece. I had never done a period piece epic drama, but I always kept my eye on that book. And I let everyone know, everyone who works here at my company, 21 Laps, if there's ever an opportunity with all the light we cannot see, let's pounce. And one day, that opportunity happened. The reason why I'm here is because of Adam Driver. Because I did a movie last year with uh, Noah Baumbach, White Noise, with Adam Driver and Greta Gerwig. And at some point, I think that Sean Levy asked Adam Driver to play Van Rumpel. And Adam said that he's not available, but he, he said, I'm shooting right now with an actor. You have to meet him. It's the German me, he said. <laughs> this is the story that Sean Levy told me. I feel really privileged uh, to, to do this. Um, actually, I mean, it's not a secret that for all German actors, at some point, it's interesting to play uh, or to participate in the U.S. market. And yeah, it turns out to be a really, really unforgettable, beautiful experience. I'm so happy to do this. It's, it feels so good. It's so joyful. The light you get from a piece of coal is actually sunlight. I would say the single biggest decision, long before I was thinking about production design, sound design, was Marie. Who will be my Marie? And as soon as I really started thinking about that, I realized that it was important that someone with that lived experience represent their own lived experience. One of the benefits of a, of a globally ubiquitous company and platform like Netflix is once we decided we were going to do a search for uh, anyone who felt like our Marie, we used all of the social channels and all of the kind of reach of Netflix to basically put out a wide open global casting search. We got thousands of iPhone videos. Some people were actors who had done so professionally. Some were aspiring actors. Some were people who had never even thought about acting. One of them was from a PhD Fulbright scholar at Penn State named Aria Liberti. And Aria, who is wicked smart, she's never auditioned. She's never thought about being an actress. She's an academic. She's a rhetoric PhD candidate. And she sent in an audition. And we were like, what, what are we looking at here? I think this girl is good. And I think maybe she could be great. I zoomed with her. I zoomed with her again. And increasingly my realization was, I think this is a one, I think this is a moonshot, a unicorn of a discovery. Someone who understands this character, who loves this book with a passion way before anyone was gonna turn it into a movie or a show, who understands the book intellectually because she's a genius, but who understands it in her soul. And she brought such lovely, soulful feeling to Marie, along with fierce intelligence, which is critical. And she got the part. What do you say when you speak? I say, isn't the world a beautiful place? director is Sean Levy and from the beginning on I was really 
fascinated by him because he celebrates actors. I have never been with somebody who's so into acting. And I think it has something to do that he started as an actor or that he's also an actor. But he's really cheering. He's cheering while you are shooting. So in the scene, he's always there. I always, he's, he, he's the third partner. If you, if you have a dialogue with somebody, he's there around and you I can hear him breathing I can hear him laughing and I can see his hands going like, like if you come up with something and this is so satisfying this is so inspiring for me because I mean it's as simple as that this is what it's all about you know I want to be seen I want to be recognized and he gives me this feeling and he gives me this trust and still he he's always aware of what you perhaps are missing out. So I made the experience, experience as an actor. I go home after a shooting day and take a shower and suddenly I think, oh no, I, I should have done it differently. Why didn't I do it like that and this? And he's the, the kind of director who tells you immediately, he said, ah, what do you think about playing it maybe completely the other way around? And it works. And that's, that's really creative and that's really inspiring. Lars Eidinger was maybe the biggest surprise because the assumption going in was, oh, Von Rumpel is one of the leads, it's the villain. Um, we're gonna get someone major, some major famous actor the way we knew we wanted for Daniel and Etienne. So I called my friend, uh, Adam Driver. And I said, hey, I know you spent a bunch of years as Kylo Ren, so maybe you don't want to play a villain again, but do you want to consider playing Von Rumpel? And he says to me, um, I'm not available, but there's this German actor on the new Noah Baumbach movie I'm doing. He's this theater actor who is famous in Europe for his audacious turn as Hamlet, which he's performed hundreds of times all over Europe. His name's Lars Eidinger, and I don't know, he kind of reminds me a bit of me in all the weird ways. You might want to meet him. So I called our casting director and they were like, who? I'm like, Adam Driver says I need to know Lars Eininger. Find him. Next thing I know, Lars reads Von Rumpel. And I knew in three sentences, this is a walk away. It's done. It's done because like Adam Driver, he's so specific and he's so unexpected and I don't know what the hell he's gonna do with his next line. And that makes him eminently watchable and it takes a villain that could have been cardboard and one dimensional and it makes him fascinating and dangerous in his unpredictability. And so uh, I'm just, I'm incredibly excited and proud to be one of the filmmakers who will introduce the world to a talent that they will not forget and they're gonna see a lot of, because I think Lars is one of the unique actors of his generation. But darkness, the professor said. Darkness lasts, darkness lasts not, not even, even for one me. second when you, you turn, turn on the light. light. For me, the most memorable part is, or was meeting Arya. That is something I will never forget. And that was something, that was a life-changing moment for me. I, I look now different on things and I feel very privileged of having this experience. Lewis understood Werner as this pure soul in an impure nation, in an impure time, being indoctrinated into evil to which he doesn't subscribe. And Lewis just had this innate understanding of Werner, the romanticism the gentleness, the feeling of being swept away in a riptide of circumstance over which you have no control. I mean, I know Louis Hoffmann, of course, because he's a well-known actor in, in Germany. But to be honest, I found out that it's a complete different generation, a new generation of actors coming up. And He's so much more self-confident 
than I am. I have the feeling. I don't know, maybe he just appears like that, but he's very mature and he's so... He's bringing a good energy into the room and he's like everybody's darling. He's He has a chat with everybody and maybe he would describe it differently or, or maybe out of his perspective it appears differently but this is the way I see him and I'm, I'm, I really envy him because of this because he's, he seems to be so free. I had worked with Mark Ruffalo on The Atom Project so I knew He's a brilliant actor, he's a lovely human, and there's something so fantastically, soulfully dad-like about him. And as I said earlier, I have four daughters, so you better believe that my version of All the Light We Cannot See is going to centralize the father-daughter story. And I cast Mark, but what I didn't anticipate is A, how good he would look, in the period costumes and whole style. Like, if I put that stuff on, I don't think it would look organic. With Ruffalo, you just buy it. But more critically, Mark and Nell. Every time Mark and Nell are on screen together, I defy you not to tear up because he has such a comfortable, authentic warmth towards Nell, a physical ease with Nell and she with him. The way he plays these things with Nell, these scenes with Arya, that's beyond something you can direct. And that's beyond something that you can fake. And Mark brought it, and I feel like it's one of the secret weapons of this series and of Mark Ruffalo. What I loved about the idea of Hugh, who I, I had never met him, but Etienne needs to be a character who was a war hero, is paralyzed with PTSD and agoraphobia, and who then returns to greatness, who comes out of his shell, who comes out of his house, literally in a return to heroism. And I thought it would be interesting to take this actor, who I mostly know for his reserve and his cool and his elegance, and to complicate those traits, to see weakness, to see vulnerability, to see apprehension and anxiety, and then the satisfaction of seeing, oh yeah, now he's back to badassery. Oh, uh, no more coffee, Uncle Etienne. I'm finishing up. No, no, this is for me. And it's brandy. It's all about the team. I have never seen a team like that. They work really like one person. It's like, it, it's like, it's very organic. It's so respectful. They have an awareness for each other. They have an awareness for what's going on. They, they push things, they, 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 when, when after, after a take, when I walk around, everybody is giving me feedback because they saw what, what had ha happened. They saw what kind of influence they had on what was going on. So it's something you create together. And this is what I always, I'm always sad about or when I have the feeling there are the technicians and the artists because it's all about art, what we are doing. You know, every single person, even if it's about the catering, you know, this is something that has an influence, you know, and they are so nice people and it's good to talk with them and they make good food, you know, and that, that all comes together. And you can see it at the end in the face of the actor. And this is what makes it sometimes so unfair that um, at the very end, it's all about the actors, which, which hopefully you see in my face the result of the work of the, of the team, of the group. And I'm, I'm really impressed. <laughs>